Hello, welcome to Sunday morning coffee number 14. It is Sunday evening as I've been at Fiasco trade show in Leeds. So it's an even, oh, I'm out. <laughs> it's another of my very sleepy updates, but they're always the best ones, probably. You probably get more out of me because I'll just tell you all my secrets because I'm so sleepy. I'm just going to move that. I'm right in the light here. More morning? No, good afternoon, evening. Hello, hello everyone who's come along already. Woo! Hello. Um. Yeah, I'm a sleepy thing. Uh, so I've come back. I've been at Fiasco trade show in Leeds all day. And then I came back, died a little bit on the sofa and went, oop, let's do the live thing. I have my extra large coffee with me today. Whoa. Yeah, it does. It's like, good morning. I'm as sleepy as I normally am. <laughs> oh, no, it's evening. Um, just make sure I'm not chucking my feet on minis. This this room's getting more and more messy, so luckily the only bit that you can see is this. <laughs> uh, so what have we got for this week? Other than we should be um, loads more World War Two research has been happening. Um, it's cold. It's gone cold. <laughs> so about uh, I've been doing more videos. I've got more sculpts. More and more been angry all week <laughs> I'm not angry anymore I stopped being angry yesterday so everyone at Fiasco was very happy about that um so yeah, now there's a good chunk of you I had my first sip and then I will tell you all about some stuff banana guy <laughs> banana guy's lucky because I was roaming around going I haven't got anything to show off for this this one like oh yeah I do I've got those bananas so stick around for some banana action and also see you've seen it before but i i should always show off my um my micro guinea pig how small it is that's a 1p <laughs> it's so small so i've been at fiasco all day which is a, a trade show it's one i don't normally trade at and I technically wasn't. Um, I had, so I went up with <laughs> Sarissa, and they they have they are carrying my stuff and have been this year. So they take it around as stock. So it wasn't my stand. So I went and helped them set up and helped just be an extra body on the stand basically. And um, because I wasn't officially working, it meant that I wasn't actually as stressed as I normally am. And I got to chat to lots of you and have long conversations rather than sort of be running around doing a million things. And then I met up with some people in the afternoon and disappeared to the pub. The pub was a lot further away than I expected, <laughs> but that was really nice. So I got to hang out with another company and a couple sculptors that I don't get to hang around with enough. So that was really fun. I put some pictures up on Twitter. Hello everyone who's come along. Woo! Um, so yes, I really liked Fiasco. I've had a lovely day. I feel like it's just really nice. It's just a, a lovely, lovely day. Um, I'll probably go to bed after the stream, <laughs> or I'll just read. I'll probably read actually, but I don't last very long reading in the evening, so I'll read a little bit and collapse. I think. Um, so I met lots of people. Uh, sold lots of things as usual, uh, which is cool. Thank you very much. I got some nice pictures of the stand being really busy. Uh, what has happened this week then? And hello everyone who has come along. I don't have as much to um, to monologue as I normally do. <laughs> it was very dark at Fiasco. That was my only. Uh, I got there and like, whoa, it's dark. Maybe they'll some shows they have it a bit darker, and then when it started, they brighten it up. Um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Andrew Hemingway, maybe? Put a picture of us up on, uh, on Baggy's cave and it is like we're in a cave. It's so dark. Um, but luckily my stand is bright and lovely. And I apparently can be seen from afar. So that's that's a bonus. Um, what, where shall I start? Are you subscribed to my newsletter? If you are, you should go to your inbox and you will see a lovely surprise. 
it might be in your spam so you should go have a look and I've only mentioned it in the newsletter and it's really cool but it ends midnight tonight so you have to go and see what the what it's all about because you'll be gutted if you see it tomorrow uh Catherine it was my first one uh Mike and I thought it was great Walled Games Down was a bit too cramped the Pendragon and Sarissa Basquiddo was really nicely spaced yes I always try and make the stand so it's accessible so if you're in a chair or have a push chair you can get in and also to protect it from backpack people knocking stuff over <laughs> but yeah obviously the more stuff you get the harder it is to um to well <laughs> my brain's gone again um to fit everything in basically I've, when i've done stands now i've it, sometimes I really should go over 12 feet but then you have to pay a whole extra and all that stuff and elbow people out the way to get your own stand. I'm evil! I'm <laughs> evil! <laughs> I can't possibly be evil. Um, yes, go check. Oh, oh, Tom, I see you've just checked your inbox. Yes, yes, go, um, go check your inboxes. Well, after this, you don't have to check it right now. But um, yeah, as so many people haven't seen it, and it's a very short, rare generosity of mine. So you need to have a look. Um, uh, Mr. Mike Tung, who is in the comments, um, who is also called Big Mr. Tong, is uh, the banana man, one of the people I was talking to today. Um, and he gave me this, and uh, he was talking about how he's a sculptor and, and and it was interesting, but then he mentioned some about bananas, and I was gone from like, oh, that's interesting, to you're the banana guy. So then we chatted for like loads because he's also into guinea pigs and, and makes these banana guys. You like seen them all over Facebook, and it ended up on a meme at one point. So it's like a banana guy, a banana guy, and also um, he does the like, extras to make like a Frostgrave warband of bananas. Look at that guy. Ooh. See, this is the advertising that money can't buy. <laughs> it was like, oh, I'll show you stuff off in the live, like, no. And then I was like, oh, cool, a banana thing. There you go. Woo. But he also gave me some painted banana guys. And again, absolutely no affiliation. He was just lovely and gave me banana stuff. And I'm well chuffed with them, so I need to use them for something. Um, but I should put uh, if I hold the thing up, you'll see it. But Mike, you can put a you can put a link in the comments. That's fine. So he has them on Thingiverse. Look at the banana folk, the banana dog. So yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with my bananas. To be fair, um, I'll put the thing up. There we are. It's Big Mister Tong on there uh, on Thingiverse, and I'm pretty sure that's in reverse, so you can't see it. But yeah, got some banana stuff. Uh, because I disappeared, as I say I disappeared to the pub, and you'll be like, oh, had two pints and some food, so I'm okay. Uh, but because of that, they're very appealing. Because of that, I didn't actually get to do my little recce of the armories, which was the plan. But I have been there quite a lot of times before, and I did have a very thorough look at it earlier in the year. It meant that I didn't go to look at the books, but I think I've got all the books they sell. Didn't get to look around the other bookstores, but I did get to go to the pub. And I got to meet sculptor Mark Evans, who I've never met. I've no idea if you've managed to get to the stream because he was very confused about how you get here. <laughs> you might see it later. So hi, Mark, if you ever see this. Um, he was one of my very first sculptors, but I'd never met in person. So that's always good to put a name to a face and have a couple of beers and talk about ridiculous things. So that was good. Uh, so I saw Paul Muller, um, sculptor Paul Muller, who's now started up uh, Midlight, and Dark Fable. He was such a nice guy, and then he just sort of left and went off on his own beer mission, which was quite funny. I was a bit jealous, but it's probably best to get back to Nottingham. I did. I was with Dave from Sarissa, so I had to send. I had to send him to stop and to have a nap because he was very sleepy on the way back. So he has an enforced safety nap while I roamed, roamed the wasteland of the service stations. They're very odd places. <laughs> I'm always wondering why there's so many gambling machines. A very odd place. Also, I thought, seeing as we're doing Sunday evening cocoa, I actually don't have any cocoa. So I'll nip in one of the shops there and just get a pot, 
not you know what not one from the dispenser but a um uh just a pot and i thought it'll be really expensive but it's you know it's in a service i couldn't we're back we're back we're back Whew. um so in all this really super important news of the week i couldn't get coco in a service station but i could get a big wooden owl <laughs> you know, like, where are the priorities what are life's essentials like oh damn i really need a big wooden owl i'll stop at the services but yeah who knows but perhaps we should ask annie to pose in a banana costume for reference <gasps> do it oh please do an annie banana totally i'd be up for that he was talking about um having to do female banana or people wanting him to do female bananas so you're like how'd you do that just put boobs on them i don't know but an Annie in a banana costume, that'd be ace. I, I was telling him that he should just go with the whole banana man thing and just banana up. Just got to go with it. Be like if I was angry at people calling me the guinea pig lady. I'm like, Fair enough. Uh, what have we got? Um, a mixture of absolutely exhausted um, and like that, you know, when you're really tired and it's like you're drunk. That's kind of how I am. I have other news though. Um, anyone who's come along, check out your inbox if you're on the newsletter. There's something cool, but you have to look today and you'll be gutted if you don't. Um, other news, I have a load more new sculpts from Shane. I put one up on the page earlier. <laughs> he says, deal. Banana early! <laughs> you're seeing the cross-promotion potential here. Um, what was he saying? Guess new sculpts from Shane who is just all the Amazons, he's done some more civilians, they've kind of left the Amazon realm now into just sort of multi-use fantasy civilians uh, but the one that got low, loads of Facebook points in the week uh, is the lady with a sword so she can be a civilian, a princess or just a, a knight that looks wearing dresses um, but she's really, really, well, I love the simplicity and I was really chuffed that other people picked up on it in the comments and there was a few saying like, oh we're fed up with swords that have millions of gems and details and all this fancy see you tom thanks for coming along <laughs> all this fancy fandangles and just too much um and the sort of harking that's what i love about my miniatures that with the simple they're nice to paint if you want to jazz them up there's loads of space where you can do freehand and practice your blending whereas when there's just bits all over the place oh personally i find it a bit of a nightmare so I like to make miniatures that I like. Um, that seems to have worked so far. Yes, uh, Claire says she's been earmarked for my totally not Disney princess warband. Like, yeah, that's just the sort of vibe I get from it. I like that. Um, as well as those lovely ladies, he's done some new Amazons. And there's one of them is... I can't, is it, am I allowed to, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. It's got a very Red Sonja vibe. She's not Red Sonja and she's not a knockoff Red Sonja, but it's got that sort of vibe going on um, in clothes. <laughs> but she's possibly my favourite Amazon so far. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'll know maybe that is, I've been on the edge of ill for about a week and a half and I keep spending pretty much every evening thinking, I'm going to wake up really ill tomorrow and then I don't so just taunting me dragging it along I spent most of the week being unable to swallow got that back but now I've, got, I've probably caught something from from you lot at the show <laughs> who knows uh so yes miniatures uh amazons uh so there's the cool cool warrior lady uh we've also got a standard bear amazon with a squ squid banner which is really nice and a really cool hero captain type um he's working on something super crazy at the moment um and a new one of geisha but she needs she needs some friends so occasionally i'll just get a sculpt and then i don't really want to put them by themselves so she's really nice but you might not see her for a bit because she might wait for some friends this is where shane watches this and goes ah i'll sculpt more I'm like, ah, so many sculpts um and more coffee for a monologue. Oh, I don't have much monologue in me. Whee! Yes, I do. Uh, so they've come out. Um, the sculpting is continuing on the home front. So I might have something next week to show you. Well, that'd be nice. Even if it's not in person, I might have to show you some pictures of some greens. So that's happening. That's exciting. I'm getting. I'm getting a bit further with the um, the specifics now. So Alan's work, I'm sorry I'm spinning this anyway, 
Ellen's working on a uh, lot of the blanks at the moment, so blanks slash dollies. Hi George, nice to see you. Um, oh, that was a bit aggressive. <laughs> um, so he's working on the, the basics before we get the rest of the stuff sculpted, so um, I, oh, it'd be cool if I had some to show you, but I don't. Um, so it's quite common, for, especially with troop type things, where people will do what they call dollies, which is like a sort of skeleton underneath. And in the olden days, they're very detailed and then you'll cast it and then you'll swap a head out or you'll put a bag there or you move the arms. Ours are really basic, but they save the sculptor a lot of time in just getting the scale right and all this. Um, but they're not detailed, which means that ours don't look like clones with slightly different heads. Uh, I've got some really lovely pictures somewhere. So they'll be just almost like, uh, you know, the mannequin dollies that you get, where it's a very rough sort of hourglassy shape. He'll do that and then depending on what it is, he'll maybe do some detail on the feet, but it's just getting all of that. So because I'm doing evacuees, we've also got some varying height children being made. And then if we want to do quite a big pack of different children doing different things, we don't have to, well, we, <laughs> me the sculptor, um, Alan doesn't have to sculpt them all from scratch because um, they're all going to have the same shoes on, that sort of thing. So then it, it gives him a good starting point and we can have lots more, uh, which is good. Uh, so he's working on those. Uh, I watched a documentary about Nur, I need to, I need to remember these names now, Nur Inyat Khan. Uh, she's a Muslim Indian British woman who was one of the first <laughs> this is it's like it's like I've done my homework and now I'm in the test or, or no um, but it's how I remember things um, by telling you so everyone that I've bumped into has been getting stats about the 600 ATS women from the West Indies and 350,000 women that were unemployed at the start of the war that were made unemployed because they shut down the industries but didn't let us into the other industries straight away so they're all like I want to help in the war but anyway uh war yeah nor nor in yet Khan I think probably pronounced the middle bit wrong but I haven't I'm very tired and haven't got a reference uh, she was the first SOE that was a wireless operator in France so she went undercover as a oh it's the story time of Annie she went undercover as a, a nursery uh whatever it is, nursery nurse, <laughs> working in a nursery and then in her spare time she had to sort of skulk away with a little briefcase and tap 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 the, the messages across uh, in a German, German occupied France with the Gestapo strolling around looking for that sort of thing and I think it was three, three to six weeks the average time before you got caught and she was I think it was six months she was there. She did get caught and she did she did end up getting shot, so it doesn't end well. But she did do a lot. Uh, and watching it, because I, I suck under pressure. I can't deal with time trials in video games or anything. I just I'm so I do not operate well, I just freak out. And it was explaining about how you've got to uh, do these send these messages as quickly as possible because you've got up to 20 minutes before they find you because they're obviously tracking that sort of thing and if you do a typo someone dies and yeah that's that's sort of like anxiety dreams that I get so to manage that long getting it perfect is just madness and at one point she gets caught um, she gets caught by a Gestapo guy but because it's early in the war, they're not used to looking for lovely women. So obviously as we get later on, there's a lot of SOE and they're all lovely women. They're not in army uniform, they're, you know, sort of full makeup, fashion, um, and they're, you know, doing all their spying. But they weren't quite ready for that yet. They weren't expecting it. So she bumps into this Gestapo dude as she's out with, because she can't get enough signal, she's like wiring it all up across the tree. And I'm like, oh... Um, and yeah, it's amazing. He comes over and she's like, hey, just uh, fitting up the old jazz aerial. Got to, got to like my jazz. Who I know it's against the rules, but I just love jazz. I'm a lovely woman. Um, he lets her off and pretty much just goes, yeah, I, I love jazz. To be fair, I'll help you with this, young lady. <laughs> 
whoo! <laughs> so little close calls like that, I was like, oh dear. Um, so yeah, she did. She did pretty well. When she did get caught, she did. She um, they found a book with all the codes in, so they were able to continue sending codes. So the British didn't know that she'd been taken uh, for quite a while because they had all of her secrets basically. But that's that's just one one of them. So there's a lot more. But I'm trying to make my figures more diverse. So basically. Any, anyone that's non-white has been like trying to get some more of that, different religions. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned it last week. Somebody uh, linked me to Polish women that were training in Scotland um, for if uh, basically for sea lion stuff. If um, the, uh, the Germans come over. So there's some really good pictures of them. So I've still got loads of resources for that, but I haven't done my research yet. But they will totally be a unit of Polish women in combat gear with the hats on and all that. The hats on, with the helmets on. Um, so that's cool. It's just old things. And I'm trying to sort of stop, uh, update people's ideas of what the home front is. And I was saying last week about it, that it is very white and very male. And then apart from these little kids that are evacuees and the odd lady that people go, oh, yes, there were land army. But there's so much more that people don't know about or just aren't as publicised. So I'm trying to dig for as much as I can. I'm really excited. Um, uh, oh yeah, someone sent me a photo of some WAF, uh, Women's Auxiliary Air Force, playing cricket. So like off duty. And I was like, oh, that's cool, but I don't know what to do with it. And then because I was sharing the stand with Sarissa, someone said, oh, have they got their cricket pavilion? And I'm like, oh, Sarissa do a cricket pavilion. So I checked that. I haven't had a proper look at it, but I think it's usable for that era. And I like cricket pavilion and worth ladies. I <laughs> can't, Manny. Whoa, juice stop. It's so exciting. I love it. I'm so excited about this project. It's, yeah, it's so good. I'm finally getting a bit of time to do more research as well, because that's what's always frustrated me. That I'm like, got all this stuff to do, but also all the really boring business running things as well. But I've had quite a good mix this week. <laughs> oh, dude, hang on. Uh, what else? I'm sure there's other news. Um, I'll skim over it very quickly because I'm excited. I had had quite an angry week. So I seem to have I go through phases of the internet being fine, and then it's just challenging all week. I've had people on every social media, not tons, just a few, but it just sort of just having little goes at what I do and I'm pretty good at just going oh sod off um but it just because it's constant you just I may after a while I'm just like really and it's like I'm fine but the subconscious levels obviously been dented so I had a couple of days and it's like I'm in a mood but I am not in a mood it's like I'm just in a weird and then I had another company do a right condescend at me. So it was just like, oh, right. And <laughs> just like that all week. So uh, the more people know me, the more people that have just been like, oh, Manny, this week, please. Um, and luckily, yes, I did eventually um, finish my bad mood on Saturday. It was good. And the world was safe. And I, I'm really glad I got to Fiasco today because I was looking for... Um, uh, Oh, sorry, I was reading through that. Um, yeah, I was looking forward to just seeing some nice faces and people have been lovely. And I, I put on Twitter something like, I'm so angry this week, everyone's awful, and got a million pet pics, which is the best. And I did ask to see people's faces. I got some really nice faces. And lots of people that said they didn't have nice faces, but they did. Um, and then randomly yesterday, someone contacted and went, oh, someone's copied a chunk of your Kickstarter into their Kickstarter. Like, um, but luckily that appeared to be a misunderstanding. Um, but that was a very odd. He had a link on his Kickstarter to my web shop because he copied that section. <laughs> I was just like, I'm not in the mood. But yes, I will skim because you don't want to listen to just me ranting about stuff. But that's been quite a difficult week, just in terms of, yeah, just it's hard because I'm always like, woo, positive. But then there's always this like shielding off all this like, you're ruining the hobby. Why are you making people wear clothes? I'm like, it's fine. And it's nice. One of the reasons I really like doing trade shows is because the internet has so many angry people. But when it's in person, none of them want to actually come up to me because they're all a bit scared and I just get all the really nice people. So it's lovely and I really appreciate, even if you don't buy anything, just people that come over and go, yeah, 
then that's like a really good boost. So that's why that's why I'm super like wee because I've been all charged by excellent people today. <sighs> Sounds excellent. Uh, what other news? What other things have happened? Um, I was going to show you the updated bofers, but there was a problem with the courier, so that's coming tomorrow. So if you look on the internet tomorrow, I'll show you that. Whew, sorry, I have a little coffee in my monologues. You're still here. This is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I do appreciate it. <gasps> mm. I've started a a mini series on the YouTube on the YouTube's called A Look Inside. It's because I've been enjoying doing these videos, but anything other than live, it's still a pain in the ass. I've still got I've still got to do all the editing and stuff, and because I've got so little time, I've just not been doing videos other than these. So I've been doing some on my phone that are just, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to do a load in one sitting. I was going to Friday and I ended up not, but um, to to set up the camera properly, because I've been doing it on my phone and then there's a few crinkle noises. So I'll set the camera up and just film loads at once. Um, just going over the details, kind of like I do when I've got something new to show off. So like this is one of the new Palisades. Um, the, the thumbnails are good. But um, the my brain is just going. It's just going. <laughs> it's because I keep reading here. Um, the yes, Balsades. <laughs> yes, the video is just sort of showing um, just in detail what all these. So I can show you here, but they're all the lives. So if you can just access these little um these little videos just to see all the details. Alan Marsh is here. He's a sculptor. Hey, Alan. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. I'm under pressure now. I can't talk about all the things that I'm saying you're going to sculpt and haven't told you about yet. <laughs> and Alan's going to do eight million figures by next week. <laughs> um, what's the, what did they see up there? Oh no, Mike's trying to sculpt me now. Terrible. Um, please take over the world, Annie. You would make it a much nicer place to game in. Oh no, the power is corrupt. I've become a terrible, terrible person. Um, yeah, I'd like enforced guinea pig rescue and all this. Uh, anyone up north is interested in a cricket pitch? Sarissa Recon 19 in Pudsey. I assume Bad Squid products will be there too. Thanks for that, Catherine. That was a good plug. It was nice to meet you today too. December the 7th. Uh, they will also be at... They're possibly at crisis. We had another of our discussions today where we all go, I don't know. <laughs> Are you going? I don't know. Because um, I was asking them if they go, whether they will take uh, some of my stuff. And they were like, I don't know. So all the traders are like, but I won't be at crisis, which sucks. But I'm going to try to find someone to put my stuff on to. Uh, what else we got? Um, so where was I? Yes, so these little videos, I've been filming them in little batches, uh, but I'll be... I'm thinking of filming a big chunk, maybe like tomorrow or something, and then just uploading them every day, just these little, they're just a couple of minutes long, and just going through the details of each pack, so you can see them a lot better. They've had quite a good reception so far, so it's nice to do stuff that isn't just my uh, my rambling, although I still ramble over those. I did the chameleons, and just like, oh, look at this, this is so cute, with little chameleons. Um, so yeah, so I'm just... Uh, Doing a lot, as always, but I've been doing lots of, trying to spam the internet a lot, so I've been doing lots of social media, bits and bobs. Usual, in case you've only just appeared, check your inbox, because there's some really cool thing in there, but it dies, <laughs> it dies at midnight, so you have to go, or you'll see it tomorrow, and then you know, other things will suck. Uh, can I have a time check, please, because I don't know what the time is, it's probably about time for me to disappear. And read more, and read more and more, and then fall asleep. And then my reprinted both of stuff comes tomorrow. Exciting. There might even be other stuff. Thanks, Sass. <laughs> uh, there might even be other stuff in there. I don't know. I just saw that I've got a, a shipping delivery for tomorrow. So that's coming. Um, and that's when that arrives, I can send my whole Bofors kit to the painter, John Morris. If you're lurking, I don't know if he watches these with a secret account. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, yeah, he's going to get the Bofors and all that to paint up. And something really stupid, because Alan's here. Alan knows he's going to feel bad, but he doesn't have to. Um, he made the 
the view the ID telescope pack so that they all had their own position and I hadn't noticed so when I sent them to John he painted them beautifully and then I spoke to Alan who pointed out that one woman was in the wrong place so poor John got an email going would it be a pain if you just <laughs> so he's up for it so hopefully he can just take them off the base and reposition them so I sent him a photo um it's probably a right annoying job but he is getting it with the Bofors, which is a massive job for him. So it's not like it's just a tinker. So um, that'll be not fixed. It still looks cool. But now I've seen it, I'm like, yes, yeah, it's, it's the woman smoking. She's sort of got her arm out and it's supposed to be um, sort of twiddling a thing rather than just just going woo. So he's going to change that and get all the Bofors painted up. And he's excited because he's going to do some fancy airbrushing on it, I think. So that's cool. Um, any other questions or stuff like that and I will head off soon. I feel I should show you this um, whilst I've been focusing. I've been trying to keep the newsletters up to date. So the newsletters have been going out pretty much every week at the moment. And I've been doing this thing where I resend it if you don't open it. <laughs> I just say, oh, my days. Um, and trying to keep my activity on forums a bit like they used to be because I used to be the queen of social media sorry. and now I am not because I'm always too busy so I'm trying to just keep keep up on things and it's so easy because I'll put a post up and then I'll think I've announced that but actually not many people have seen it so it's that sort of repeat announcements so one of our latest releases the Ronin Shoujo she is her chums oh her packaging came on Friday, so I get them brand new packaging. Um, and then these are our chums. So they're part of the Onigashi range. And we're doing quite nicely at just sort of adding new releases to all the mini ranges. As I was saying to someone at the show today, it was so you can't escape. I just sort of circulate round. So just as you think, ah, she's not going to do any more of that for all. Ah, she's done some releases, she's got me. Um, I'm really excited about the home front and the amount of people that came over today uh, saying they were excited and sharing ideas and that's brilliant. Um, that's, I'm, that's possibly the most excited I've been about a project. Um, I was exceedingly excited over the the Soviets when we first did them but it was also tied in with a whole bunch of anxiety because it was the first checkable sort of historical i was very worried that if i did something wrong like a button in the wrong place that it would all go wrong and no one would buy them whereas i now know that they do like my things and the, the combo of my my weird brain alan's amazing sculpting uh, cma's incredible casting and then whoever paints them probably john's gonna paint quite a lot of them um who is also excellent that whole dream team i'm i'm really confident now that I know people are going to love them because they love what we've done before so it's more of it and that's just awesome uh so yeah it's it's not got as much of the but what if nobody wants it because i know you will so yeah make sure you save up i need to sort it's supposed to be the 24th of november uh, that's not very far <laughs> so i need to get it cracking on with my actual boring business plan it's a lot of work so doing all the figuring out the bits and bobs around um, the Kickstarter, like what the pledges are going to be and all this. So that's that always takes longer. And then sorting all the graphics out. And I spoke to Martin Whitmore, who does pretty much all our art, including that little fella, uh, about if there's stretch goals and I don't think Alan will be able to keep out, keep up, bless him. <laughs> if there's some crazy stretch goals and obviously we're not going to have them done before that, and Marty's up for doing some sketches just to show the stuff off for you. And I will be spamming the world with just loads of really cool photos. So it's uh, implanted in your brain. <laughs> thank you for coming along. Um, thank you, um, Banana Man, for making me into one of your French bananas. <laughs> I'm interested to see that. Hi, Ben Rolls. Yes, it was 8pm. If I'm at a show, or uh, it's only been if I'm at a show. Even if I'm somewhere else, I've been doing them at 10 but yeah, I'm just about to go. But you can watch this back on here and you can watch it back on the YouTube. And if you haven't signed up to the newsletter, do that. Although it'll be too late for the call thing. But if you sign up sort of now, I'll see. And then I, I might just send it to you because that's nice. Um, but yes, read the newsletter till midnight tonight and you'll lose chance like Cinderella. 
uh, Instagram and I've been Instagram story putting loads of uh, sneak peeks on there just because they disappear in 24 hours so I've just been like da 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 here's all the secrets and that's fun uh, Twitter is the best I love Twitter join us on there and this is Facebook so yeah um, uh, yes goodbye and thank you and thank you everyone at Fiasco and I will see you next week and all on the internet goodbye